Okay, continuing on with about our life with Marcia, the little town we used to go down to sometimes near the Skagit was called Alger, and there was a motel there we used to stay in. I got pictures of us staying there. You could get a smoking room there, and uh, it was a lot cheaper than the Skagit. And there was, you know, you could buy booze from this little garage up the road, and uh, cigarettes were cheap. And then there was a little neighborhood pub there we used to order food at. We used to go over there and sit and watch the bands and stuff like that. It was kind of fun. Um, and then we, we took a trip. Uh, trips that we took were we went to, uh, we went on the houseboat again one time together. We went up to Sycamus again. And another time we went up on a, I, I rented a, a motorboat, a speedboat, and we went up the lake together and, went all the way up to Seymour Arm, which I'd never even been to when I was a kid. And it was kind of a bay, Seymour Arm. I couldn't see very much there, though. I, I thought it would be a lot more impressive. But there used to be an old house up there that I heard about when I was a kid. I couldn't really see it either. Some English couple had built it. It was like a really nice place. But we we didn't go and dock and walk around. We just sort of drove in the bay and... uh looked around, and then we went back, because we only had the boat for, uh, the speedboat for four hours, and it was, it was about 25 miles up that lake or something, and we stopped and looked at the Indian paintings and some st- stuff like that. Marsh had discovered Indian paintings at Swall Bay when we stayed there. We took one other houseboat trip up there together where we stayed at Swall Bay, which is a little park that, uh, Donna told us about is across from the Narrows and I'd worked at the houseboat store there and so we'd stayed there the second time on the houseboat by ourselves this time but uh, we were so freaked out it was so dark up there and scary (laughs) we kept thinking about Sasquatches and and cougars and all kinds we had the doors all locked and uh, we had a nice time though you know we went hiking up the mountain a little bit Went skinny dipping and um, laid on the rocks naked. Got my balls burned. And I went and lost my only fishing hook. I went diving for it the next day. I couldn't find it. Marsha took a picture of me with no clothes on except my mask. That's I got a picture of that somewhere. And sitting on the chair somewhere with nothing on. And uh, anyway, we, uh, we had a nice time that time. But... It, it was kind of freaky up there because I thought if something happens to Marsha or me, there's no doctors, you know, they, you got a two-way radio. And you, those houseboats, you know, they have to keep watching out how many times you flush the toilet. you got to start it up to keep the batteries charged. And So anyway, but being up the lake was wonderful. Marsha discovered these Indian paintings up there that I've got pictures of. And uh, they were sort of under a rock. They weren't even listed in the Sycamus uh, list of Indian paintings so that was a nice trip up there we used to stay at a motel in Sycamus and visit my sister and stuff like that it's nice up there in the summer then we took a trip to Nelson once uh, stayed at the, I know I've repeated this before we stayed at the Hume Hotel and uh, it's the old hotel in, in Nelson uh, down on uh, Baker Street and we went to uh went up to View Street and found my old house up there where I'd lived. And uh, I'd phoned my old teacher. I found her name somehow. I don't know how I found it. Miss Hopwood. I guess when she was, that was her name when, I know she married the vice principal of the, of the, this, the Hume School. I guess it was the Hume School I went to. Um, the Hume family had been big there, I guess. Anyway, uh, I went to elementary at that school, Hume School. We went to the school and took pictures of the school. Because when I was a kid there, they used to divide the uh, the, the uh, playground out front, girls on one side, boys on the other. And then you'd have to line up on the, on the sidewalk that went up to the front door and walk up in pairs to go back to your rooms. Um, so we went up to View Street and looked around there and and Nelson's really a neat town, a lot of old buildings. And we went from there down through uh, Weimar, which has got the old uh, hotel there still. Uh, I 
forget what it's called, but it's nothing that much in Weimar. Um, that's where they had the old restaurant, Slump's Dump. Um, I told all these stories on my earlier thing about growing up, but um, then we went through Castlegar and down around stayed in Asoyas. We used to stay in Asoyas quite a bit. We went up there two or three times too, and uh, we stayed in the, I think it was called the Fiesta Motel or something, or some name like that, right on the beach. It's so hot up there in the summer and dry and beautiful. We used to buy all these, you know, beef steak tomatoes and cucumbers and yeah, make go back to the motel and make sandwiches. We had a little kitchen unit, you know, the fridge and everything and uh, sit and have our wine, go down to the beach and swim and go up to the, uh, there's an Indian reserve up there with a sort of a museum and a winery. We'd go up there and look around, drive around. I love that area. And so uh, another time we went out to, uh, up to Edmonton, Highvale, and I took Marsha all the way up and drove all the way up the Yellowhead Pass. And that's uh, traffic was just awful. It took us 13 or 14 hours to drive up there. We were so tired and hourly by the time we got there. We got a motel. We drove into Highvale. We couldn't find any. There's nothing in Tomahawk except an old, kind of not even a hotel. It's just a bar with a empty rooms upstairs and so we had to turn around and drive back about 30 miles to get a motel and we stayed there and uh so we stayed at the motel and oh, and then we went the next day driving around Highvale trying to find uh you know Marsha's old house we found the barn finally but we never found uh the graveyard of her parents we should have really uh stopped and phoned John, but we never did. I went through this on my earlier, one of my earlier things, but um, it was nice to, Marsha, she found where some of the people up there used to live that she knew, some of the farms, like, um, can't offhand remember the names, Um, the Caldoons was her mother, but there was another family up there, we went there. Another time we went up to Yale, a couple of times to Yale, just out of Vancouver here and uh, stayed at a motel up there. It's nice up there and went through the museum. There's an old piano in the museum. I never played that one, but it's like a real antique. And then they got a camp. Uh, They got it set up like the old uh, mining camps up there from the gold rush days. It's in part of the museum with these tents with uh, ones like for the Chinese workers. There was used to be a Chinese... There used to be 30,000 people or something lived in Yale at one time. When the gold rush was on, they were building the uh, the um, railroad up there. So, And there was even a Catholic convent up there full of nuns. and It was quite the place. We liked Yale a lot. And uh, we, we used to sit around here in the living room. We seen they were selling a trailer up there once in a trailer park for... 25,000 bucks. We own the land, has an outdoor pool, the caretaker for 25 bucks a month. And it was a, you know, like a two bedroom trailer or something with a porch and everything. Would have the money. I should have bought the darn thing because now they're building a ski hill up there. I think I'm repeating stuff I said in earlier things here. But anyway, in case I didn't say it, I'm doing it. And uh, me and Marcia used to collect a lot of rocks. And we used to. Well, we took a holiday every summer, and she's so wonderful, you know. It's, Marcia started getting memory problems later on, but we had probably 10 good years together, or mo- actually more than that. We've been, 2020 now, we've been together since 2003, and uh, that's when I met her. We got married and baptized 2004, got married in 2006, I guess, or something. And uh, we had many, many nice times together. We had lots of fights, too. Uh, Lynn, uh, Lynn can attest to that. But it all drinking, that's the thing. Marsha would, you know, she would get drinking and then she'd flip out somehow and, uh, you know, go on these big tears. I'd get 
scared of her, you know, and have to lock myself in the bathroom. And we were both drinking, though. I'd be laying in the bathroom on a sleeping bag, still drinking. She'd be out running, going around the house yelling and whatever. That's too bad, but anyway, she used to, she used to imagine, you know, like, oh, you were, you were screwing a neighbor out in the parking lot. I went, what? Of course I wasn't, you know. And then she'd get mad, but she'd go from like normal to just a flip like that. And then you know, the neighbor's daughter up against the house, and oh, every every holiday we went on, you know, something happened like that. It was like imagining things that you know I never fooled around on her ever but anyway that's that's a minuscule part of our whole thing Lynn used to get fed up because I didn't know what to do and I'd phone Lynn but later on Marcia started doing that when she wasn't drinking you know like we were driving along in the car one day this is before she ended up in the hospital um and she goes where's Lynn I said what do you mean she's in Los Angeles honey no, she not. She was just in the back seat. I said, no. And then she got mad and started hitting me and scratching me. And at that time, I'd driven to the cop shop and she stopped. But then it started getting at the, you know, at the mall. She'd go in the bathroom and I go, how long has she been in there? She'd get lost in there, I guess. But, uh, and, you know, she, I had to argue with her every morning to take her pills. You know, I don't, my doctor's not here. He's in... I don't know. I'm my doctor's in Los Angeles. I I don't have a doctor. I said, no, honey, you got a doctor here. And then she started passing out. Maybe she was just overtired, but she passed out two or three times in Walmart and uh, once at a at the fair at one of these country markets where she'd pass out, sort of seize up and pass out. And then maybe there were many strokes or something. And then she'd wake up and say, oh, no, I'm okay, you know. And, uh, but this is in the, just in the last few years this happened. But before that, it was wonderful. And she's still wonderful. I mean, I love her so much. And she, uh, she is uh, so beautiful. I can't wait to see her every day when I go there. Um, so any, anything, everybody goes through ups and downs and, problems here and there and that's just one little quirk of her personality but she was good up until about the last three or four years I mean even even though she'd get jealous sometimes and but what a lot of women do that so you know it ruins a lot of marriages and uh but we you know all the nice times we had together and putting our arms around each other we still you know it's it's uh, a really special love that I have for her and she has for me, I think, you know, we love to be together and, you know, uh, it's, I put my arms around her all the time still and kiss her and hug her and I'm, you know, since she went to the hospital, my heart breaks the time I, you know, actually phoned to get an ambulance, but she was starting to get up in the middle of the night wanting me to drive her to this house where her mother lived and you know, there was no house. I drove her a couple of times and, you know, she'd want to wander out and her, you, did you kill our kids? Where's our kids? You know, well, you know, stuff like that. And she'd get be waking up and couldn't sleep. I was taking her to all my jobs and, uh, you know, she'd start dumping sugar in the flowers and, uh, you know, things that people do, you know, when they get uh, dementia. And, uh, Finally, one night when I'd been up all night trying to reason with her about looking for her mom's house and all this, uh, I think I'd phoned Lynn, and Lynn said, you should phone the ambulance, Richard, maybe you can get help. I'm sorry the day I ever did, but I guess it's probably was the right thing to do because it would have just keep getting worse. I couldn't get any sleep. I couldn't work. It was getting to the point where I couldn't take her to the jobs. What am I going to do? And then I remember... When I phoned the ambulance, she was sitting at the table and she said, you just drove a knife through my heart. Oh, my God. Two things that hurt me in my life was that statement and when Jesse had said to me when I'd broken up with Lisa, Dad, I thought I was going to have a happy life. That killed me too. Uh, But anyway, uh, 
that's uh, so anyway I'm still hanging in there Marcia's still hanging in she been sick while she's going downhill I guess but I love her to death uh, that's what I when I put my hand on the Bible said we'd been married to forever together it's the truth and uh, I go uh, visit her all day every day we have a lot of nice times together still so and she's uh, but I miss her like crazy so uh, that's all I can think of for now thank you